Today we're going to make a concrete patio with a solid cedar deck on top. This project is for this shipping container house that I'm building out in Joshua Tree, California. If you want to see that project getting built, click on the link in the description box below and it'll take you to a YouTube channel dedicated to the entire construction process of this house. We're going to get started by making the frames for the pavers out of 2x4s. We use 3 inch long deck screws to attach the 2x4s to each other. We decided to start the pattern for the pavers in between the containers. That's because this is sort of the center of the whole patio and if we get it right here, it'll be easier to spread out and keep it consistent. We don't want the pavers to be too big because then they'd be more susceptible to cracking. So we kept them to about 2.5 by 4.5 feet. The gaps between the pavers will get filled in with gravel and we weren't that consistent with them. They range between about 5 and 8 inches. We screwed on some short pieces of 2x4 scrap so that we could line up the frames with the edges of the foundation slabs. We don't want the frames to slide around so we hammered in some steel stakes and then drove deck screws through the holes in the stakes and into the 2x4 frames. We brought in a trailer full of sand to place in the bottom of the frames. We had a bunch of rebar left over from the foundation for the container house, so we cut that into pieces so that we could wire it together to make the reinforcement for the pavers. We're going to break up some dobies, which are little concrete blocks with wires in them that are used to keep the rebar or reinforcing mesh from sinking to the bottom of the forms. A friend of mine suggested spraying the wooden forms with vegetable oils to keep the concrete from sticking. So we tried this on some and left some other ones clean and it really didn't make much of a difference. Normally I mix and pour concrete by myself, but we have over a thousand square feet of pavers to do, so I use some hired labor. I also picked up this concrete mixer from Home Depot which came in real handy. We're using Quickcrete 5000 concrete mix for these projects. It's my favorite concrete mix, it's affordable, it's available everywhere, and at 5,000 pounds per square inch, it's way stronger than typical concrete. Once the concrete was thoroughly mixed, we started dumping it into the frames and then using rakes and shovels to spread it around. We used a scrap piece of 2x4 as a screed to level the top. We don't need the pavers to be as smooth as countertops because then they'd be a little bit too slippery, but we did spend about 5 to 10 minutes troweling each paver. After the troweling, we used an edging tool to round over the edges of the pavers and also to start creating a little bit of separation from the wood. This was tough grueling work and it was complicated by not having good places to stand since we had built too many of the frames and we kind of trapped ourselves. But the reward for the struggle is a very durable modern concrete patio that comes in around just $6 per square foot, even with the labor that I hired. The first batch went fairly well, so we started setting up more frames, but this time we made sure that we always left plenty of staging to the side of them so we'd have an easy place to stand while we mixed and poured and spread around the concrete. We also switched from rebar to a reinforcing mesh, which was cheaper and easier to cut. We let the concrete cure for three days before removing the molds and everything came out pretty good. Although we didn't have room to unscrew all the deck screws, so we had to use a pry bar and a hammer. Seeing how well the first batch came out gave us confidence, so we hired a bigger crew and did all the rest of them in a single morning. Once we'd removed all the wooden formwork, we then poured in some 3 quarter inch gravel that had a nice gray color to fill in all the gaps. The concrete portion of this project was labor intensive, but the materials are pretty inexpensive. For the cedar part, it's kind of the other way around. We're going to make the deck out of 12 foot long western red cedar 6x6s. I used my palm router and a 3 8 roundover bit to round over the ends of these 6x6s. I don't want the cedar sitting directly on the concrete and wicking up moisture, so I got some 1x6 pieces of composite decking to use as runners that will go underneath the cedar. I laid the composite decking directly onto the concrete and slid them all the way up against the house. I slid the first 6x6 into place 
and then use some galvanized steel brackets to secure the 6x6 to the composite decking. I use my palm router on the next 6x6 to cut out a recess that will go over that galvanized steel bracket. A scrap piece of angle steel that's 3 16 of an inch thick was handy to use as a spacer, and I just used another pair of brackets to secure the second 6x6. The brackets are fine at keeping the 6x6s from sliding around, but I want a more substantial connection between the pieces of cedar. I want to use 10 inch long lag screws to connect the 6x6s, but the heads on the lag screws are too big to fit in these nice quarter inch gaps that I created. So I drilled some one and a quarter inch diameter holes about an inch deep in the side of one of the 6x6s that will allow me to recess the head of the lag screw. I then used an extra long 5 16 inch diameter drill bit to drill pilot holes for the screws. This just makes it a little bit easier to drive these large screws and secure the two 6x6s together. And so this was pretty much the whole process. I would route out the recesses to go over the brackets, place the 6x6 using my spacers, secure it with a pair of brackets, and then pre-drill my holes and drive in the lag screws. This is my first time working with Western Red Cedar and it's fantastic. I couldn't believe how straight these 12 foot long pieces were. Cedar like this will hold up against the elements very well and will turn a nice silvery gray. And it's way easier to work with than a tropical hardwood. If you want to find a Western Red Cedar dealer near you, click on the link in the description box below. Western Red Cedar is not a paid sponsor for this video, but they did hook me up with some of the materials. So even though this deck technique involves some pretty pricey materials that are definitely thicker than they need to be, what I really like about it is that one person can systematically set up this whole deck pretty quickly. When I got to the last 6x6, I drilled the holes to recess the lag screws extra deep. This way I can put wooden plugs over the lag screws and hide them. I shoved in a dowel and then used my Japanese pull saw to trim the dowel flush. I then did a little light sanding with my orbital sander and 150 grit sanding pads. The edges of a few of the beams were a little bit splintery, so I just used the orbital sander to smooth these right out, and this was pretty easy since the cedar is nice and soft. Because these deck boards are so thick and there's no exposed fasteners, I'll be able to sand this down every couple years and bring it back to new. According to the True Cost Guide on HomeAdvisor.com, the average deck in America if you hire someone to build it costs about $35 per square foot. This deck cost about $30 per square foot and only took me 3 hours to build. And I like this trade-off because I'm getting the value of premium thick materials that will last a really long time and I only have to substitute in a little bit of my labor. This is a pretty expansive deck and I'm going to have to build some furniture for it before I can start entertaining, so be on the lookout for those DIY projects. And if you want to see the video series that shows how we built this shipping container house, be sure to click on the link in the description box below that takes you to our brand new YouTube channel, The Modern Home Project. Thanks for watching. Bye.